Oh. Hi folks, 27th I believe of um, October, I think it's the 27th anyway. Uh, yeah, here am I in the studio as you can see and um, I've just got here some bud vases that I made. Hi, I have some bud vases here. I've got a lot of things going on here as you can see on this bench. I'm also in the process of making chamois leathers, etc. Um, let's see, what well, here, these are some bud vases. Oh, and I did put a seal on the, that one. Yeah, this one's not sealed. So basically these ones, as thrown, now have got to be, they've got to be thumbed off there on the, on the foot. And then I put a seal. So in my last video you saw me doing the, basically the seven, the seven steps to uh, making a bud vase. What I'm going to do is, all being well, I'm going to use this, this roller up the side here. So starting about there and then rolling up the side, we're going to we're going to do this pattern. The impress wheel design. Just got to hit this at the right moment when you do this because if it's if it's too soft when you push like this, it it pushes in, you know, indents it. So, are we in a picture? Um, I'm basically just rolling this up, as you can see, up the side there like that. Now these little roller stamps, I've told you before, you can make them very easily. And I discussed that, didn't I, in a recent video. And I showed you my little kiln that I used to fire them. Dee, 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 dee. Up we go. <clears throat> Coming around to the other side. Sort of want to get them a little bit sort of straight and uniform, not too higgledy piggledy, if you know what I mean. Dee, 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 dee. And... So it's going to look. <laughs> Something like that. Hope you can see that. So that'll be actually quite nice with a sort of um, a, a Temaku glaze on the top, for example. Let's do one more. I'm just going to do two or three of these. I'm not going to do them all right now because I want to. I've got a couple of other jobs I've got to do. And as I've got your attention, um, I'm just looking here. Yeah, we could try that one, I guess. So this is sort of like a herring, herringbone design one. So I'm starting there, pushing and rolling up to the top. It's easy to do and yet it's not easy to do, if you know what I mean. It's easy to do but to get it looking really nice takes a little bit of a little bit of care, a bit of practice. Practice, yes. They call it herringbone, but I mean it, it it looks it looks somewhat like um, like kind of heads of heads of wheat standing in the field, doesn't it? Come on, 
coming round to the other side. I think two more there, maybe. Something like that. Uh, yeah. All right. Some of these actually I'm going to leave plain. There's always so many different things that you can do. I'll just leave it at that uh, as far as those are concerned. Okay, quickly we're going to get over here now. Um, but I just wanted to bring you up to speed with that. I've just got here three tankards. I've got to dip them. I've got to dip them in glaze. Just got to make sure that the 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 glaze is properly stirred and I've got the you know I've got it right off off the bottom you know you don't want to think you've stirred your glaze when in fact you've left a lot of the heavier sediment constituent parts of the glaze have are still stuck to the to the bottom of the bucket Now I've got here a sponge with some water, a pouring cup or pouring jug and a, a lid from an old container which acts as a saucer. Okay, I've got just going to do these five here because those are going to be in a different, just this is just inside only, you know, raw glazing. These are for cone Cone 10 in reduction, my reduction kiln as usual. Okay, so we wipe off. Just wipe the rim just across the top there. And then with a spray bottle, okay, just spray the outside like that. That's all we have to do at this stage. We come back later and dip the outside or do whatever we're going to do. Pour out. Just get the excess strips off. I'll just wipe across the top. That's it. That's all you do. Yes, have a go at doing some raw glazing. You know, once you get into the once you get into the swing of it, it's pretty easy. That's it. The reason we wipe the top is just so we don't get too much of a build-up of double thickness of glaze because when I come to dip the the outside it'll take on another layer there so that's why we want to make sure that it's a if we can reduce it a bit just by wiping it's a good idea I have found you have to develop your own tricks in this game don't you your own, your own way of doing things, your own technique. No, no, no. Okay, one more to do. Then we're going to nip over there to the to the banding wheel. We're going to do something different over there.
Ja. Okay. Alright, we'll just put those there. Chip that back in there. Okay, we're gonna go over there now. <laughs> we're on the move today, aren't we? Do -do -do -do. <laughs> Some more buvases there that are dried off now pretty much. I'm going to, yeah, I've just been doing here, I'm working towards a firing which I'm desperately behind with. Well, yeah, nothing new there, is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are just banded there. But what I've got to do now is I've got to do these teapots. I've got to wax the lids of the teapots. Let me show you how I do that. So, um, I'm thinking actually I should have the camera on the other side. Sorry folks. Ooh. I think it would just be better. From there, yeah, that's better. I, we usually have it there, don't we? So, yeah, so I want to... Um, so th these teapots, now I have already done this, but it's important to clean the inside off just inside here where the holes got poked through. Um, I usually use the back of a spoon. I'm talking about the holes that, that make the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the strainer there. Because when you made them initially, you pushed through from the outside, if you remember, to make them. So on the, on the inside, the clay that's pushed through is like sharp, sharp edges, you know, burrs. So you need to clean off those burrs. Right. So I need a... Aha, yeah, I meant to do that beforehand, but I didn't, did I? Uh, bear with me. I'm just going to go over to the other side of the room there and get a brush for waxing. Let's see what we've got. Brush for waxing. Oh, well, I, I can't find one, so I'll just... I, you know what, for waxing I use... Um, I don't use brushes that are... Unless it's like I'm doing some sort of decoration, but just regular banding. You get yourself some of these cheap, cheapo brushes. You know, they'll they'll do the trick. And then you can use them and, and sling them out afterwards. Because honestly, they're not really worth... I find um, wax... Brushes don't like wax much. Uh, unless you really clean them off well with hot water and la di da di da and uh, I never seem to manage to do that. So this is some wax resist here. It's like an emulsion type wax, it's water, water soluble. So I usually just plop a bit in the lid, something like that, and then I uh, add a squirt of water to it, just to thin it a bit. All right, so we We'll just have that there. My decorating bench is getting crazy around here, isn't it? So I've got a brush rest there. Right, so what I'm going to do, we're going to, before we apply the wax, we're going to put the lid on. Okay, and we're going to just get this in the center here approximately in the centre, like that. Okay. So we've got, try and, if there's a, some slop in the lid and it's not, you know, a tight fit, which it quite often isn't with pottery, just sort of try and find the middle. Are we in a picture? 
That is the question. Are we in the picture? Okay. So what we're going to do is, using a pencil, okay, with a sharpened point, what we want to do is spin this around like this, okay, put your finger there, and we're going to mark a line like that, okay. No, then I don't know if you're going to be able to, whether that's going to come up in the video, but there's, there's a pencil line there. So that, that pencil line is going to um, now you want to carefully make sure you get it back on center now. Now it's more important to get it properly centered because what we're going to do is we're going to Because tap sending a teapot is not that easy because you've got the spout and the handle coming round. Alright, I think that'll be that'll do. Take some of this wax on the brush here. First of all, mix the wax with the water. Make sure that it's now when you're doing this, you want to be very careful you don't get too much wax on the brush and it gets somewhere where you don't want it, like on somewhere else, you know. That's, that, that is then a real problem. Okay, so having done that, we're now going to spin the teapot, taking great care not to, you see how I'm holding my hand out here so the spout doesn't come around and smack my hand. And I've got it at an angle, so you've got to check those things, okay? Put a little bit of wax on the very top there of the flange. Okay, and now a little bit of that on the side. I haven't done wax teapots like this for absolutely ages. Can't remember the last time I did it, but I guess it's one of those things that you once you do it, you don't forget it. So now I'm looking at the line, the pencil line. Taking it down to the pencil line. Let's bring the camera down, I want you to see that. Okay, you see there, yeah, I think you can see the pencil line. All right. So, we'll just do a couple of these, just to show you this is what I've got to do. Um, actually, I could have done the inside of there, and I should have done, but I can't do it now. So I'll demonstrate that on the next one. Okay, it's another impressed design here, so let's get the, the lid on, find the, the, the middle point, you know, if there's any slop there in the lid. Pottery teapots generally have a little bit of slop in the lid. It's kind of normal. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I'm not bothered about having an engineering fit. Yeah. It's probably a good idea that you don't actually aim for it to be too tight, the lid, because you end up with a lid when it comes out of the kiln, you can't get the lid off. You know. <laughs> There's method in, in my madness. Okay, so I've got that now on center. I'm now gonna use my pencil here, making sure I've got my hand lifted up like I do. Okay, spin it. Just put a finger there. Time just to make sure we get a good mark from the okay. Yeah, I can see that. All right, now what I'm going to do is, which I didn't do on the last one, I'm going to take the lid okay and put it upside down on the 
on the on the top of the flange, okay. Centralize it up and if you want to, I mean you, 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 you can make a little a line there. Alright, now take some wax and apply the wax. You might ask yourself, maybe you're asking, maybe you are asking yourself, why do you do all this, Simon? What a lot of fuss and bother. <laughs> I ask myself the same question. <laughs> no, seriously. Uh, you notice how I'm holding the brush, brush with my pinky finger, you know. It's all those years of drinking tea, you see. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, there have been times in the past with, with bisqueware when I'd be doing this, and I, you know, and, I, and I, I'll, I'd have some some glazing to do, and I thought, oh, I can't be bothered to to wax it. I'll just I'll just glaze it and clean it off, you know, afterwards by scraping it, you know, as we do. Um, Okay, so having done the lid, let's just show you the lid. You see that there? Because of course when the lid sits on the teapot, we don't want it to stick to the anywhere, you know, on the flange or anything. So having done that, I can put that down. Now I can do the, the actual flange itself. Now the reason I, I didn't do this, well I, I forgot to do it on the first one and, I, and I, I didn't want to invert the lid on a waxed flange like that because it will transfer the wax onto here and that's pro problematic, you know, um, from a glazing point of view. Having the wax there on the, on the wrong side of the lid, you know, on the top. so. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, when I used to do, when I used to do, um, when I used to bisque fire everything, cleaning off glaze on bisque fire wear is easier than on raw wear, okay? If I was, if I had to clean all this off and scrape it all off and I hadn't waxed it now on raw wear, I'd have a job, you know what I mean? I'd have a job to do. To get it, it's more difficult to clean off a glaze over greenware or rawware than it is on on bisqueware. That's because the very nature of the scraping away of the glaze, because the because the the clay body has not been fired, you end up scratching away the clay itself in the process and it's it's un, it's untidy and messy and it doesn't and it's not so and it's not so easy to do you know all right okay let's just bring the camera down so you can see that well why aren't we busy today well okay so you see there the where the wax is all right okay um, as I mentioned, the inside there, I don't know if I can get the light on it, inside the strainer, which you can just see down, down in, in, in there, um, it, that's, that's important to, there it is, the strainer there, those holes inside, make sure that you've deburred them, okay? All right, okay. Whoa. So now that one which I didn't do, I'm gonna have to maybe that bit of rubber oh, that might work. 
just stick that there and just stick that on top. Hang about, let me just see if I can quickly do this one. Oop. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, so I'm using this piece of rubber to improvise for not, not having a flange, you know. I think that'll work. So by, by applying wax like this does not mean that you don't have to do any cleaning off. You most certainly do. It just makes it a, a somewhat easier, the, the cleaning off process. And it usually just requires a wipe off with a sponge as opposed to having to actually scrape the clay, the, the glaze away. What we're doing today in all this is not really, it's not beginner stuff, you know, it's a little bit more, a little bit more advanced, you know. But it's all part of, it's all part of it, you know. Part of the process. So if you get any wax on your fingers or anything like that, make sure you wipe it off, get your hands clean. Don't get any wax on your hands and then start picking up pots because the wax will transfer onto the pots. Okay, that clumsy. <laughs> so yeah, I've got a few more here to do. Um, Another teapot. You've seen the, you've seen all these teapots in the past. Um, actually, that 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 guy is not a bad. Is almost actually better than putting it on, inverting it like that, and waxing it just to put it on there. Because this lip here, this this flange is not always. Sometimes it's a little bit, you know, not 100% flat. Maybe. So that's just something. Maybe we came up with a good invention. This one's got a bit of a rock. This one is not. Why isn't that a flat? Oh, C. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. There's something to actually. Just to show you, you see in the trimming there, I left that little spigot in the middle there. Well, you want to make sure that that little spigot in the middle does not stick up too too high. And if it does, you're going to have to you're going to have to either remove it. That's better. So that now. Okay, I think we'll just call this video a call it a day there. Thanks for thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, here in the studio, another another afternoon. It's Monday. It's Monday, Monday afternoon, and um, we are potters, and that's what we do, isn't it? In our studio, we do these little jobs here and there. So this is sometimes people think about, oh, I'd love to be a full time potter. Well, being a full-time potter is, I get asked actually quite a lot, you know, to talk about being a full-time potter. I, I'd like to be a potter. What's involved in being a full-time potter? Can I, can I make ends meet, you know? Um, yeah, you could, quite possibly. It won't be easy, I can promise you that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we could talk about that, couldn't we? Uh, so, yeah, always something to do, isn't it? A job here, a job there, over here, over there. I've got tools I'm working on over there as well. Some cut-off wires I've got to make. If you're interested in a workshop, November 7th and 8th, I've got at least two free spaces. If that interests you, 